Hey City Light Kids, welcome back to week three in our series of Love Your Neighbor. Now, before we begin today's lesson, I want to give a huge Happy Father's Day to all our dads out there. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for leading our families and showing us the love of God. Now, last week, Miss Rebecca talked about how we are each created in God's likeness or in his image. Even though we might look different on the outside, in each of us, we have unique characteristics of God and we reflect those um, to one another. Now, this week, we're going to talk about God's love. And to kind of talk about this, one thing I wanted to do was show you a special collection of some things that I have in this really cool basket. So this basket was actually given to me by my Aunt Amy, I think when I was probably in second grade. She gave it to me after her and her husband went to Mexico for their honeymoon. And this was one of the items that she brought back. So this basket is super special to me. So I like to keep a bunch of other special items inside of it as well. So I wanted to show you some of those items. Now, this item right here, okay, was when I was maybe, I think in kindergarten, and my dad used to have a special badge that he used to scan in for his work, and I thought that was the coolest, and so I wanted to have one as well. So my dad made each of us these little badges, my brother and I, my sister wasn't born yet, but he made each of us these little badges. I wanted mine to say Lucy, because I really liked that name, um, but this badge was super important to me, and so that's why I keep it in my special basket. Let me show you another special item. So this one, I got any, oh, let's turn it around. This is a tiger rag. So for any of you Clemson fans out there, you'll know what it is. But I went to a college at Clemson University. And so at our football games, we would kind of, we would uh, swing these around in the air during the football games and cheer our team on. And the reason why this one is so important to me is my sophomore year, we were playing Notre Dame. And it was a huge, huge game. Um, at the time, Notre Dame was good. And it was really um, big competition between Notre Dame and my school, Clemson. And to add to it, we watched the game get ready for this, in the pouring rain. So for several hours, we were out there cheering on our Clemson Tigers in a torrential downpour, but it was worth it because we won. And so I kept the tiger rag that we used at the game to cheer on the Tigers. Another item that I want to show you is this can of ravioli. I know it looks really weird, um, but it was something that my husband gave to me when we were first dating. And it's a pun because on it has these slips that have the letter D on it because he was making fun of like candies, like, you know, chocolate and things like that. But instead of it actually being candies, he used a pun of where he put a bunch of the letter D's in a can so that it's a can of D's. Get it? Candies, candy. Eh. Anyways, he has a lot of dad humor. Um, and so this I kept just kind of as a memento uh, for whenever we first... Um, started dating but one that I really wanted to show you which I'm kind of having trouble finding and it's making me a little concerned um, but it's really really cool but I'm just kind of getting a little concerned as to where it might have gone oh no I need help do you think you can see it in here do you see I'm trying to find it it's something that well, I don't want to give it away but at the same time I'm getting really worried that I can't find it Oh no, where'd it go? Uh, uh. Oh, pfft. I see it, it fell on the floor. Silly me. I'm glad I found it though, I was getting quite worried. Now, this is a stuffed animal and I know it might not seem very special at first, but this stuffed animal I got when I was, I think, in first grade. And my dad had gone to NC State. So that's another college. That's where he went. And he had brought me this back because I was a huge dog fan when I was a kid. I mean, I had a 60-year-old dog birthday party where we all dressed up as dogs and did dog activities. That's how much I like dogs. So him bringing this back to me was really, really special. And it used to have an NC State bandana on it. Of course, when I went to college, 
Yes, I still slept with the dog up until college. My mom changed it to this Clemson one. And so the reason why this is so important to me is it's just a reminder of my childhood. Um, it was something important that my dad gave to me. Um, and I really love my dad. And in honor of Father's Day, I wanted to show you something that kind of reminds me of him. Um, but yeah, sorry for all the confusion and the stressing out. I was just really wanting to find it and really wanting to show you all this item. And I know it might have seemed a little kind of silly that I was starting to panic and get really nervous about a stuffed animal. Um, but even though this stuffed animal might not seem a lot, it's super, super valued to me. And you know what? This kind of reminds me of God's love and how he feels about us. So think about it for a second. There are millions of people all over the world, more than we can even understand right and God cares about you as an individual he knows all the hairs on your head he knows how many years that you will live he knows your name he formed you in your mother's womb so even though there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions even maybe billions of people in the world he still cares about you cares about your friend, he cares about your mom and your dad, and he knows every single detail about you because he made you in his likeness. And you are super, super valuable to him. He loves you. Now, Jesus told a story one time to his disciples um, about a shepherd who had 100 sheep. That is 100 sheep. Can you imagine trying to corral 100 sheep? They're all going in every which direction. But anyways, the shepherd had 100 sheep. And unfortunately, at one point, he lost one of the sheep. So he went searching high and low to go find the sheep. And so we're going to read about that real quick in our Bible. So as we read this in our Bibles, go ahead and get out your hand dandy Bible and turn to the book in the Bible named Luke. So we're going to the book of Luke. We're going to go to chapter 15 and verse 1. All right, you ready to jump in? Me too. So remember, we're talking about the lost sheep. Remember, the shepherd had 100 sheep and he had lost one. So Jesus is telling this story and he says... Um, tax collectors and other notorious sinners often come to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such simple people, even eating with them. Guys, okay, so this is a little bit of a backstory. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will you, he do? So what do you think he'll do? He has a hundred sheep, but one of them gets lost. You know, let's keep reading. Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and goes to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and have strayed away. So in this story, even though the shepherd had 99 other sheep, he still went searching for that one lost sheep. And remember, he searched high and low and when he finally found the one lost sheep, he rejoiced carrying it back home and he rejoiced with his neighbors and his family saying, I have found this one lost sheep. So Jesus told this story because he wanted us to know that God cares for us as people. Remember, he cares about you, me, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, everyone. He cares about every single one of us and he will not let us wander or stray away. Now, sometimes we might do things that go against God's will because we're sinners, right? We might disobey our parents. We might tell a lie. We might maybe steal a piece of bubble gum from the grocery store, which you shouldn't do. So sometimes we sin. We make mistakes. Or we even turn our backs on God, saying that we don't need him. But God is a loving God, and he will never leave us. 
So even though we make mistakes, we sin and we can even turn our backs against him, he still loves us and wants to have a relationship with us and he will never leave us. Nothing we can do can separate us from God's love. He is always waiting with open arms to welcome us back into his family if we should walk away. So think about this. Have you ever gotten in trouble? I know I have. And you didn't want to go can tell your parents or you're ashamed or embarrassed or, you know, you didn't really want to, but after your parents maybe talked to you, they still gave you a really, really big hug saying, even though that you disobeyed them, that they still loved you so dearly. It's the same way with God. And so, in fact, God loves us so, so, so much that even though we do sinful things, even though we disobey, he sent Jesus to pay the ultimate price for our sins and to give his life for us. He didn't just come for good people. So when it talks about the righteous people, right? The people that do every single thing right. He didn't just come from them. He came for all people so that all people might be saved and that all people might be able to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father God. And that is something that we should be thankful for. And you know what else? Since we know that God made us special and loves each one of us, it is important to love and care for one another too. If people are valuable to God, we should value other people as well and to treat them like they are that as their value. And sometimes it isn't easy. Sometimes someone might be mean to us or sometimes we don't have the same interest or they might be different than what we look like, but we know that God will help us if we ask. And remember, if people are valuable to God, we need to value people as well. We need to love them just as God and Christ has loved us. So, you know what I think we should do? I think we should ask God to help us to love one another, to love our neighbors. So, let's put our hands in the air, give them a big clap, put them in your lap, and get ready to talk to Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us, that you know each and every one of us. You know all the hairs on our head. You know how tall we will be. You know our favorite color. You know everything about us, Lord. And we praise you that even though that we are sinners, that even though we disobey you, that we sometimes turn our backs on you, Lord, that you never give up on us, that your love is in constant, constant pursuit of us. We praise you that you gave your only son to die for our sins in our place so that we may be forgiven and that we might have a relationship with you. Lord, we ask that we would value and to love people as that you see them, Lord, because you have uniquely made them. We pray that you would give us wisdom and how to love our neighbors well, to how to show them that you are that you value them and that we value them as well, Lord. So, Lord, we pray for this wisdom. We pray that we would demonstrate your love and that in this, Lord, that all the glory would be brought to your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for our dads on this special day of Father's Day for showing us the love of God. And we pray that you would bless them, Lord. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Well, thank you, City Light Kids, for joining me for another week. I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day, and I will see you all next time. Hey, City Light Kids. Welcome back for another week of worship. Um, this song we have done before and is back by popular demand or the demand of Miss Val. She really likes this one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's called Every Move I Make. Remember, the motions will be down at the bottom. And you can follow along as we get faster and faster. You ready? Here we go.
one got really, really fast. It was hard to keep up. Thank you guys so much for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. We'll see you next time. Bye. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Couch Questions. We are happy that you're here. Remember, we want to use these questions to help us have those really good conversations at home about the awesome lessons that we've been having here at church. And the one we had today with Miss Amber was awesome. Right. Mr. Austin and I have already started the conversation here and seeing how that lesson really shows us what the gospel is all about. So you think about how Miss Amber did everything she could to have that toy back with her is the same way God does everything he can to have a relationship with us to the point where he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us That's and right. to have that relationship with him. So let's take a look at these two couch questions super quick. We'll put them on the slide. You guys can pause it now or have the conversation after and then we'll come back for our memory verse. All right, so Mr. Austin and I just finished having our couch conversations and we realized how much the gospel teaches us about how we love other people. So we found a verse in the Bible that I think is perfect for our memory verse this week. And if you have your Bible, you can go grab it. If not, Mr. Austin's going to read it for us. And read it's a it. beautiful command of why we should love others. All right. John 15, 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Yes. So City Light Kids, remember that God loves each and every one of you so much. And with that love that he pours into us, go and pour it out to other people. We love you, City Light Kids. We'll see you soon. See you guys.